I can see that most of you have already joined us, but we're waiting for a few more friends to join us. And then we'll be beginning with the webinar at sharp 7 p.m. I believe most of you have already joined in, so we can start with the webinar now. A very good evening, everyone. My name is Mahima Lal, and I'm part of Engagement Marketing Team at Hero Wire, and I'm the host for this webinar today. So before we move on to this webinar, everyone, a quick introduction to this platform, which is Hero Wire. So everyone, Hero Wire is a premium learn tech company, which is the part of the larger Hero Group, where we are on a mission to not only reimagine the way people learn, but also to build a better and a brighter future for themselves. We equip our learners with the right skill set, the right knowledge, and the expertise that they need in order to find success. And as you all can see that we're presenting a webinar today on the topic strategy in action, the secret sauce in making Swiggy a success. And in order to present this topic with us, we have Rohit Kapoor, who is the CEO for Swiggy uh, Food Marketplace, and he'll be joining us soon. Meanwhile, we have Varun Gupta with us and we also have Ronan Joshi. So I believe that you all are aware that we are in a webinar setup and you won't be able to switch on your mics and your cameras. So you have a chat box and a Q&A section open for you all. So if in case you would like to interact with our panelists and our speaker, so you can just write us in the chat box or the Q&A section and we will be here to help you with your queries. Over to you, Varun. Thank you so much, uh, Mahima. Hi, Rohit. You know, good to see you. A very good evening and a very good evening to, you know, all the listeners and the participants who are there on the webinar. I'll just take a couple of minutes, you know, to first introduce Rohit. So on the call, we have, you know, uh, Mr. Rohit Kapoor. He's the CEO, as Mahima told you, of uh, Swiggy, uh, where he's, you know, responsible to drive the food delivery business and various growth strategies. He comes with a, you know, great experience of 20 years uh, industry experience and has held various, uh, you know, leadership positions in companies like Max India, McKinsey. Uh, and prior to joining uh, uh, Swiggy, he was working as, you know, uh, in OYO as the CEO of India and the South Asian operations and also as the global CMO. Uh, Rohit, uh, welcome to the webinar. Great to, you know, touch base again with you. Uh, I think uh, just to add, Rohit is an alumni. Thank you. Thank you so much. Rohit is, uh, you know, in terms of his background, he's an alumni of the, uh, you know, Indian School of Business. He's a CFA, <coughs> you know, by ha having a degree and with his, you know, extensive experience, we look forward to a very engaging uh, webinar. I think the structure of the webinar, what we will follow today is that, uh, you know, we also have Ronak who leads the, you know, sales at Hero Wired. Uh, we'll have 45, 50 minutes of, you know, interaction with Rohit and then, uh, we will have around, you know, 25 to 30 minutes on our program, which is, you know, SMB in collaboration with INSEAD. So people who are interested in, you know, listening to the details about the program, they can stay back. And for the rest of you, you know, over to you, Rohit. Uh, great to see you after a long time. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Varun. How are you doing? Very good. Very good, Rohit. Looking forward to an engaging session. Got it. Got it. Got it. So Varun, how do you want to do this? Should I just uh, go and uh, talk yeah, about? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yours. Let's start. We have uh, you know large number of uh, participants who are already there. So let's start. Got it. Got it. So I think the um, the the topic is something which is uh, quite uh, uh, quite unique in the sense that I have to represent this topic partially from what I have heard in the company. I've just joined the company ten months back. Uh, uh, and partially from what I've sort of discovered over the last 10 months, right? And uh, in terms of the secret sauce in making Swiggy a success, uh, with, uh, with absolute humility, I, th I think I can say this for most companies is uh, when you look back, you can define anything as success, but uh, while building it, actually nobody really knows the secret sauce, right? The secret sauce is a post facto understanding and rationalization. What you end up doing and why I think companies like Swiggy are born and uh, they can scale up and uh, serve millions and millions of consumers. There are few uh, core sort of things I've seen which need to come together. Right? And let me, let me start by the most important one, which is 
basically a group of people who like each other and are fond of each other come together to do something which they are also not sure about what exactly is going to land up as right uh, but i think yeah, if you think about swiggy when it started there were already companies in the food delivery space um, one of the you know, held beliefs was that fulfillment is not the role which food delivery company should play it is more discovery and uh, offers and uh, which what is the role in the fulfillment is typically done either by the restaurant or somebody else i think the big insight which I, which uh, harsha and team landed upon was saying not stitching it together fully was still leading to a opportunity losses and b just uh, gaps in consumer service which a fully integrated experience can always give better right and in a market like india you know if you're a tech com- tech first company and you come up with a plan which says you know what i'm going to uh, start delivering orders and fulfill own the logistics ourselves there's a lot of skepticism right saying oh tech companies are supposed to largely be tech oriented and this is a dip- departure from what you're supposed to do etc but i think they were very clear on the consumer insight and that's one of the things which swiggy is consistently being very passionate about we can get it right sometimes don't get it right sometimes but the passion to really understand what is the consumer problem and what can we do to solve it is insane so i think the most fundamental change which happened is swiggy said we will own the hyper local logistics as well and today what seems like a normal industry phenomena was actually a model piloted by swiggy which allowed swiggy to become what it was because it was not a first mover in the indian market in the food delivery system ecosystem in fact if you think about it the company is 8 years old or 9 years or 8 and a half years old today right roughly so so it's it's a young company right and that that spirit of saying there is a different way. if there is a consumer need which is unfulfilled doesn't matter if those models have not been tried in the past or conventional wisdom says you shouldn't be doing it we have a very strong belief that we'll at least like to pilot and experiment with that idea and see where it goes right um and there is uh, a quick commerce was born like that right so which is the second largest sort of vertical today came out of an insight which says there is a, a consumer who wants a delivery fast and what is what are really called the top up use case saying you have a bunch of friends you want coke and chips you want um you know anything which is more sort of instant gratification you should there you don't want to wait and you get want to get it fast so quick commerce and quick delivery started from there but look where it has come today uh, frankly grocery say um, all kinds of things are being offered on quick commerce and my own belief is that uh, in in few years time quick commerce will become the default model on, on e-commerce and uh, everything else will sort of not look like the default one and this to just imagine that this vertical is uh, somewhere some somewhere around 3 years old that's it and the scale it has come to again goes back to the same principle of saying if there is a consumer insight we latch on to can we really sort of uh, build a, a flywheel on top of that and it doesn't uh, the, the the what it what we may seem from outside that this is a set formula but what really happens is 10 such things are tried out of that two two really work to a scale that food and instamart for example has become today right and there are, even at this point in time there's six more things like that we are conceptualizing trying tinkering around so one of the things we are extremely passionate about is tinkering around just because we are at, we are a scale company we don't stop tinkering around like if you uh, any of you are in bangalore you will see a app called insanely good right um uh, which is actually a 100% uh, owned company of swiggy right and uh essentially caters to 
like if you think about gourmet food or or just good food or good good ingredients right there is roughly and i'm super simplifying there's one notion of saying um, let's get what is not available in india into india and that's gourmet right so aapko aapne dekha hoga so dubai se aata hai saman different places countries comes where frankly the inside we landed was that people who have uh, arrived at a certain economic strata of life and that doesn't mean rich people that means people who have enough money like about to spare to afford a little bit extra on food okay they are looking for really authentic food and ingredients so uh, born out of that inside was saying let's figure out in bangalore and around in karnataka what really is considered as authentic food by families right so which which malai paneer is uh, sort of people think that agar ye wala aa gaya to sabse acha hai which sugar cane juice is sort of like that which cheese is sort of like that and really insanely good is nothing but a collection of all that presented in a, and it it is it, we launched in bangalore to, it's, it's small but we are seeing insanely good nps for example right uh, whenever we see question i yeah. have a question from you because you know when you mention about the pilot for insanely good right so over the years i have seen that all the pilots bangalore has chosen as the first test or the pilot market now i understand that there are you know lot of working couples etc but are there any very specific uh, you know nuances to bangalore as a market which you know sf fmcg companies or consumer durable companies or you talk about various sectors right i have i've seen most of them choose bangalore as the first landing uh, market what, what what would be the you know some of the contributing factors to that well i think in our case i can tell you why it is we are headquartered there first of all right so that that does play a role but more than that uh, it is a philosophy around the pilot there are two ways to think about pilots one way is to think that let's take a tough tough market and let's go and do it there or let's do it in two three markets right now the problem with taking tough markets is when you are launching a new thing pata hi nahi chalta you succeeded or let's say fail you don't know if the product failed the idea failed or the market failed right but if you take a market where a there is income b there is propensity to try new things c there is enough discerning consumers there at least you can tell that if the product doesn't succeed then there is something wrong with the product sure so what you're testing is product market fit at that point in time right hmm. so you don't want to tinker with both the product and the market at the same point in time so you say that there is you know income there is propensity to spend and of course you know the consumer is more discerning those three factors come together yeah, yeah. correct Makes correct sense. yeah correct because if it if it doesn't work there for example then the chances of it going to another market or working are very low right sure because the ideal conditions do exist and wahan pe nikla to bahar bahar kya chalega mushkil got it right so that's the thought process we have but that's not perfect like you people do all kinds of things and they it works for them but for us that's the way we think about it um uh, like for example kormangla is a, one of the densest uh, supply of restaurants in india hmm uh, it's anybody who's familiar with kormangla will know that uh, you have every cuisine ka 50 restaurant right to wahan pe agar supply is out of equation supply sab tarah ki hai hmm so supply will never be an explanatory factor for success or failure so then we can truly test ki consumer ko kya pasand aa raha hai kya nahi aa raha hai and we are holding one end constant got it got it and is it like hmm, got it pmf mein attribution bahut important hai like a lot of companies or people will do pmf and put heavy discounts now the problem in putting heavy discounts is did the consumer love the product or the discount hmm sure makes sense and what happens if you take a discount away because you are going to better a lot of capital post that pilot to scale it up so you want you don't want to release That to be a success in the sense that it's not mal big ya. Hmm. It's not consumer aga. You want to understand much more, saying what worked and what didn't work. So you tweak it 
in the right direction. Sure, sure. And Roy, just a follow-up question because you know today we see that across a lot of businesses, and when we you know talk about different companies, the the approach has changed, right? So I come from a very heavy consulting background. Initially, clients were you know very patient when you used to make a strategy, perfect it over you know six months, eight months, and then take it to the market. And you would know it you know much better that you know being nimble, agile, small pilots, prototypes, iterate it. So for these kind of pilots, what you're talking about, what would be the kind of time frame you will look at to make sure that you have, you know, ran it for an enough uh, span of time to be conclusive in terms of whether it is working or not working? I, I think uh, different pilots require different time. For example, if you're launching a full-fledged new business, it may be six months. Hmm. If you're just trying a use case, let's say, then my preference is to decide one way or the other in six to eight weeks. Got it. But I think more than the time, what is required is have you tested out all the hypotheses? It shouldn't be that time comes as in you are. Sure. If we know what we, whatever we wanted to be able to do. And so we exactly know what is working and what is not working. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So it is, is it? So insanely good when you talk about it, something like if if I were to imagine, would be something like you know democratizing something like a nature's basket or a modern bazaar and bringing it to you know people on the ground at, at, at on a very fast pace. Would that understanding be correct? No, no. Uh, I, I think it is uh, it is quite unique in the sense that the the level of time spent on curation is uh, is very high. Uh, and I think the the singular metric we look at uh, at a pilot like this, where the is initially consumer love is coming up. NPS sure. uh, incredibly in NPS and then repeat rates are people buying again, right? Uh, are very very important factors. So you you should you should look up. This, but this was just one example. We uh, we tend to do uh, a lot lot of experimentation always because it is very hard to theorize on what the next big thing could be. Yeah. Right. It is much, much more valuable to put it out there and uh, and really have the consumers give rapid feedback on what they're liking and what they're not liking. Look, a, a, a concept like quick commerce can never be born in theory. It can only be born in practice. No, no, who is going to agree that anybody needs anything in 10 minutes? Or which strategy paper is going to make you agree on that? It will never come. I'm, like, uh, uh, I'm guaranteeing you quick commerce will never be born. It was left to strategy only. Of course. Yep. Uh, even today, people ask me, why do you need Our job is not to judge people. I say, why do you drink wine? Why do you need to drink wine? It's not necessary at all. Water is good enough. Right? For most human needs, water as a liquid is good enough. But uh, we don't judge that. We say we, what we simply see in data is that when we deliver on time in 10 minutes, our conversions are way higher, which means consumers like it. So I think that the, the, the other bit, uh, apart from experimentation, tinkering around, is really a very strong belief and, and a cultural, almost a grounding saying. Um, customer experience is just a, not a just a fancy word, but has to be lived by everyone. So, uh, and the way I discovered it in Swiggy was maybe look, say they were sari kamiya bolti hai. Mala, aisa to any I've never seen a company which says we are not customer focused. Right? Um, and yet we know many companies are, and many companies are not. Right, in the truest sense of the term. But here, what I have seen is that as a as a CEO of the business, if financials go up and down a little bit, uh, I will get a call. But if customer something happens, right, then uh, this, the the everybody wakes up, right, saying, "Ye kyon ho hai? People are almost connected on that topic so intensely, and it is so ingrained in the company that. 
nobody needs to be told it's important and i i genuinely feel that being customer centric focusing customer experience focusing on the ui ux are not things you do because they are just good for the consumer consumer nps over time is probably the single biggest explanatory factor in my mind to companies staying good or becoming great right but it's a harder metric because it takes time to understand that so you have at, at some level you almost have to have a, have a jesuit belief on that topic saying ye to maan ke chalenge iske bina to kami ban nahi sakti so that's the second thing the third thing is uh, i think in our journey we have never accepted the fact that our culture needs to evolve like a startup so we are a very unlike most startups we are a very peaceful company where actually the processes in hr etc are very mature with there's nothing which says that you can't do it in two years you can you get the right people in get set the right processes you can be aspire to be and we have always aspired and benchmark ourselves in companies like amazon netflix and learn, trying to learn from them on the cultural aspects right um and i personally am this is a pet topic and so i uh, i resonated it with lot i am saying working hard and being crazy are not two same things need not be working hard working passionately being uh, working long hours are all okay Uh, but not at least attempting to build a solid culture and culture is not some loosey goosey thing right it's not some loose loose like let's love each other and everybody should de- desire to be sort of respected and loved by another colleague kind of thing culture is actually is a fairly hard concept it's not that soft a concept right and for us the cultural statement that we have is for example the sports team with a heart right and we emphasize on both equally strongly the sports team aspect of it and the heart aspect of it and and i i have a daughter who plays sports at a very active level so um and i i i'm sort of so i have two jobs one is a civic ceo second is a manager right so i engage with the sports world quite uh, on a daily basis and i find it very easy to explain to my teams in terms of sports analogies right so for example uh, i'll give you a classic one so when uh, sometimes people talk about saying which department is responsible for this i think great companies are fluid right average companies are compartmentalized uh, and the simplest way i explain it is saying ki football team jab khel rahi hoti hai jab do goal se lead kar rahe hote hai to kabhi dekha hai ki striker piche nahi aata hai like the striker will fall back and defend the midfield equally if there you are two goals behind the midfielder and the and the defender all move up and try and score a goal wo to chhod do last ke 2 minute mein to sab log hisab mein hote hain goalkeeper bhi midfield tak aa jata hai wo koshish karta hai ki goal khwan now just imagine if there were company compartmentalized saying midfielders will not be able to go beyond 30 meters of or 20 meters of the center line right or strikers cannot come this side of the line that's how sometimes we structure companies up right it's it's a very bad outcome but us pe wo karne ke liye innate chahiye bharosa chahiye kisi ko great sports team trust each other blindly because when you're running with the ball in let's say olympics you don't think ki ye mere ko dega ki nahi dega ball if i'm in a better position to score you just assume ki to hoga hi that's the that's the culture you want to build what is with the heart again easy to explain in sports terms one bad match you don't get dropped right yeah 10 bad matches you must go to the junior league and play again and maybe take some coaching inputs etc and come back so um i think culturally we are a very sort of clear stable company um, you you won't find us uh, in the newspapers too often for either either ways 
uh, and we like to keep it that way. We are relatively quite comfortable. Um, and that has served us well because people are challenged. People are um, always looking for higher results, but they're not anxious. They're not anxious in the wrong things. So those are three. Of, I, I think if you ask me secret sauce, I think uh, last one I'll add is we are in an intensely competitive segment. And that frankly makes all companies who are in such segments better. So competition is, is a great way to sharpen yourself continuously. Because um, see, companies which are monopolistic in nature ultimately stop serving consumers well. Just happens. There is no pressure. The consumer will have to come, to come to you in any case. Whereas companies which are in highly competitive sectors typically tend to always sharpen the tools a lot more. So we have to summarize, I think, uh, secret sauce tinkering around uh, based on insights on customers. Um, I'll say uh, extreme level of consumer obsession to serve the consumer well. Uh, the culture which is sports team with the heart and trying to live it on a daily basis. Um, the ability to, um, I think this is something I didn't mention directly, but the ability to sort of uh, stay more with practice than theory on, on new ideas and just go out and do it and implement it. And uh, we are builders. So we like to, we, we all like building new things. Uh, I think we've come to an organizational point where I think there are enough good balance of builders and operators. So for, because at scale, you also need a mindset of, of being a, uh, being able to operate at scale. And lastly, I think it's, uh, uh, we are in, in segments where there's a high level of competition and that just keeps the, uh, the saw sharpened all the time. There is no, no, Fancy framework we follow, and I think right there are uh, you know quite a number of questions. What <clears throat> you know the participants are putting up, and I'll you know elucidate some of them. So one question is around ONDC, right? So we have brought, we have uh, you know read a lot about ONDC and you know the government's vision in terms of democratizing, etc. So how do you look at ONDC, and is there you know something specific? in the works, uh, you know, from an ONDC perspective, that would be one, one key question. So I think we are, we are right now in a, in a mode that we are observing what's going on. I don't think we have a, a clear point of view on what our strategy is with ONDC. It's also very young, uh, uh, emerging organization with many things which are uh, evolving. So, uh, but, but you know, I think like, We've, we've seen uh, multiple developments which are ecosystem in nature in the past. Whether it could be competition, it could be an ecosystem evolution like ONDC. Uh, I don't think we're at a point where we have a clear answer on what this means for us. But yeah, I, I, we, we are in touch with them. We keep talking to them. Uh, that's the stage. I think 90% of companies are we, are, we are also there. Sure. Sure. Another thing, Roy, I think something very interesting that, you know, even as a company who focuses on for us also, you know, our learners and the community is basically the focal point around which, you know, uh, we want to beat the entire business. So social media today is, you know, a double edged sword, of course, you know, in terms of how you can leverage it. And we see a lot of companies being very active, you know, nudging themselves to a point where it could be a bit controversial, but at the same time, you know, you have to be very cagey in terms of the way and, you know, the means by which you put out the narrative. So as somebody who leads the business, you know, what, how do you see that? And, you know, what, what with the marketing team and with the social media team, what is the, what are the kind of conversations to focus on? I think if you, uh, if you follow our handles, we are seen as a quite a fun, uh, social media handle to follow. Uh, so 
my short answer is that i we don't give them any mandate that's what it is we have a bunch of highly creative young people who know what the company does we stay we stay away from them let them do their work and okay. i i have a, i have a very simple view on saying social media pe uh, the content which comes and i have a 19 year old and a 11 year old uh, i i cannot appreciate fully what they appreciate so and I, my favorite quotation inside the company social media is that if you don't put up something which offends me then you're not doing your job then you are not doing your job sure i have to personally personally sometimes feel like pata nahi kya dal rahe hain right uh, and then i know ki kuch to theek chal raha hoga got it got but it. I, i'll tell you a fun story uh, is two days back uh, shahrukh khan was doing a ama 15 minute ama and uh, that's how fast the team reacts uh, and uh, nothing nothing absolutely not triggered by us nothing to do with us uh, somebody asked him saying aapne khana khaya kya right? i saw that saying unke swiggy wale ho to khana bhejo hi kya and the social media team responded back saying hum swiggy wale hain bhej dete hain then somebody decided to send like seven uh, sath restaurant se khana to mannat where he stays So yeah, we are we are very much in the moment. We are, we never usually we don't miss a moment which uh, India is talking about to participate in that. Uh, the tone and conversation is very young. Uh, I I I I am quite uh, impressed by uh, what our social media team does normally. Got it. And we we all saw the photographs of those seven people, six or seven people in the orange T-shirts yeah. turning yeah. outside Manat. Yeah. yeah. So this so is see you saw it and uh, yeah, yeah. back. So uh, there's uh, the other other one uh, uh, which I really loved was uh, when I think Kohli scored a century or something in IPL, and uh, and they put up saying sorry, arm chiku is the real thing. Right? Mm. So yeah, that that kind of stuff. I don't know how they come up with it, but they come up with continuously all the time. I I can't like. So I think for for our listeners I think the takeaway is that in the moment and topicality right so to seize on something which is so you have to keep your eyes and ears open and you know latch on to not latch on to something you know it might come naturally but it has to be very very in the moment I think that's the it also depends on which category you are in right? sure for example if you're in healthcare you won't do that uh, you have to be very thoughtful you have to have Content which is deeper in nature, um, so it it, it it depends a bit on category. I think the category we are in, right? We are also a very sort of uh, high frequency category, right? So there, uh, in the, being in the moment, being connected to the consumer, uh, just works uh, quite well. Sure, understood. Got But the, the way to do it is not to sit on the head of the social media teams. Let them do the job. Let them do the job. that's also a message that you know let them do the work yeah yeah so right uh, another another thing which comes to the mind and you know what people would have also put queries and we were you know as a company we were discussing it today that being any company being any sector you cannot you know stay away from ai or chat gpt and you know people talking about it but i think of course in the in the you know last two or three months a lot of things have moved to uh, ai led generative use cases so like today we were you know discussing how that can cut across ui ux customer experience and chat gpt while it was you know it it brought it to the masses in terms of you know people talking about it but now a lot of companies are actively putting a lot of effort to see that how it can be you know actually used to maybe uh, increase productivity efficiency and you know something as as basic as writing code so how how is swiggy looking at it and uh, you know what 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 are the kind of progressions you are making on that i think um, we we've created a internal team i think led by a very senior leader right and good participation from all teams uh, and the simple thing is not about so much a, look we are not a we are not a a, a a coding platform company in a way right we, we are not a google or a, mm. a, or a apple or somebody like that or not not apple maybe uh, 
Microsoft. So for us, what is most interesting is what kind of immediate use cases we can bring it to, right? Is it menus? It is uh, um, the customer service side. And, uh, and I think again, in the spirit of the way we do things, we are doing a, just doing a bunch of things. Hackathons inside the company, we have allowed people to say, here are some budgets, right? You, you, you go and play with this. And if you find interesting, just keep bobbing up to this group, which is highly empowered, right? So they're the, the, the guy who's leading as the absolute decision-making powers to sort of put in place some of the things that they're liking, right? That's how we're dealing with it. I think they're very early days, right? Very, very early days. Uh, Chat GPT is uh, obviously the most visible face of AI because yeah. a lot of people use it and just, and they find it cool and sometimes were quite helpful. But um, uh, there is, uh, uh, really like i feel menus right uh, that whole space will get disrupted in the way it is done through ai um, and and it will make it a lot easier because today frankly uh, there are the, the simplest way to put it that you the, you can be making fantastic kachoris but you may not be the best person to describe it in a language which makes it more working. That AI can do for you. So, Kachori can also be made, but if Kachori is the other thing, then you can also be able to do it. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So, there's a question, Rohit. Uh, you know, we were talking about the social media team and somebody has put in a question that when you are, you know, looking at recruitment, or you know, hiring new talent. You know, what role does uh, you know credentials play in terms of say degrees, etc.? Or are you open to you know take people because see, as Hero Wired, uh, you know, we also see that how quickly the skill sets are changing and evolving. So in a traditional setup, while there was a lot of you know focus on you know degree and where you are coming from like when you look at talent what are some of the things you would consider and how that is changing you look whether it is online or offline uh, where you study if you decided to study right where you studied and the credentials does make, does signal something right it is not an empty signal by itself so for example, uh, if you went to a top college, at least I can assume hard work. Intelligence was the same. Right? Similarly, I think we all all we look for is and, and it depends on roles. So there, there are technical roles where, for example, if I'm hiring a company secretary, I will look for a high degree of competence in secretary area, you know, knowledge of company law, etc. Because that's that's the nature of the job. Whereas if I'm looking for an analyst or a coder, right? Coder, there are ways to check that actual coding aati ki nahi aati. For me, that for us, that's far more interesting than any badge that you carry. Right. Similarly, for an analyst, I think it's very easy through interview process to figure out that is there a problem solving ability? Is there core analytical ability? After that, I think institutes are a proxy. So we have. We have people from, I think, hundreds of institutes. We are not that uh, um, that sort of concentrated saying, yes, I have them. Right. But yes, there's a fair mix of people from all across. I think the, the, the real key, people get lost in the idea saying, uh, and you, you see a lot of LinkedIn posts saying, oh, you're biased, you're hiring from top colleges. No, no, nobody wakes up saying that our mission is to hire from top colleges and we are biased by it. It's sim we're looking for signals which dif which differentiate one person from multiple people who are applying and makes them relevant for the job and skill set that we're looking for. Right? So yeah. that's the way we think about life. Go ahead. So there's a, uh, there are, you know, two, three questions which are central to your business. But, but sorry, refer referrals are becoming a very, very important source of hiring. Yeah. So people who you worked with, uh, your colleagues have a disproportionate influence and outcome on your future career. People don't realize it. 
but today i think uh, i rely on referrals and um, reference checks uh, far more than just interviews got it got it and what, what rohit as a percentage or you know just a ballpark what what would referrals be in terms of the overall hiring it depends on in some cadres referrals are as high as 40% right mm. but even in we are doing an interview process the referrals that we run on the back, on the back of it or on the side of it are almost as important as interview itself makes makes a lot of sense yeah 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 so right there there are you know a couple of questions which are very central to the business itself and which we keep discussing and reading about it talks about the aov right the order value and uh, you know what would be a medium to long term perspective in terms of how that could increase while there would be a natural progression while you know people become more used to the idea and start ordering more and more but is there a specific you know point of view in terms of what role it will play in terms of profitability and how it will progress over a period of time so yeah, i i believe in india aov is a important uh, metric uh, especially as a delivery cost involved uh, in those businesses any business where logistics is involved uh, there is a cost of logistics in india which is operated at a certain level and above so aov is a very important parameter i think the good news is the aov in the categories we operate in is already pretty decent we don't as in you can look and say a bun samosa is listed at 59 rupees but that's not aov that's a item price mm. aov is a average basket order value that one is ordering in single order so uh, and overall i expect aov is to move in line with food inflation on the food side so we we think about it that way but it's an important uh, very very important metric it is a very important signal of profitability sure sure understood and in extension to that rohit uh, you know while you look at say you know starting pilots in some some cities like bangalore uh, there's a question around uh, tier 2 and tier 3 because a lot of businesses would you know start expanding to uh, say you know a tier 1 and a tier 2 and a tier 3 some some you know insights on where does the business comes from and what would be the kind of spread you are looking at so look we are uh, we are in about 650 600 hundred cities today roughly right uh, so pretty much any city which has a 1 lakh 2 lakh population plus we are already there um, i think uh, the 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 and i travel a lot i, I personally since i joined gone to about 40 45 cities right? and spend time um my learning is the following and if i can put it very simply food is a local there are some national habits in food and there are some very local habits in food that is irrespective of whether it is a tier 1 town or tier 4 town let me give an example food habits in calcutta are not the same as they are in delhi both are metros right uh, as they are not same in a Hubli versus a uh, Jhansi. But having said that, that digital equalization of India is massively happening. Because पहले या तो पहले कोई कोई वहाँ Jhansi में बैठा है तो उसको Delhi आना पड़ता था कोई देखने के लिए कि नया क्या है. आज उसको Instagram पे वही reel दिख रही है जो आपको दिख रही है बैठ के. Yeah. Which I call the digital equalization of India. Has happened lately. Like with especially on the back of the uh, the 3g 4g network spreading to small towns now the the consumption catches up basis gdp per capita hmm so you see this country uh, this city is becoming far more larger as the gdp per capita catches up because desire of the consumer is already there to buy now it only turns out that whether there is money in the pocket or not enough disposable income or not so that's the delta not so much in terms of what people want like it is a it may be a bad assumption to believe that for example if you deliver slowly in some small city it will work it doesn't work yeah so from a com- consumer expectation point of view you are saying it's it's largely the same i agree i think so 
and doesn't make a difference. The base just increases. Yeah. See, the consumer is looking in food for very sim- three simple things from us. It's not complicated. Nahi. Khana chao na chahiye. Value lagna chahiye ki thik value hai. And time pe aana chahiye. Hmm. To wo to same as it. Got it. Got it. So I know that we are running short of time, but there are a lot of questions. So I'll just, you know, maybe take a couple of them, Rohit. Sure, uh, sure. You know, there is one question around, you know, some details around your ESG initiatives. If you can, you know, throw some light, somebody has, uh, you know, taken on that question. And secondly, there's a question on the thought behind uh, uh, minis, Swiggy minis. Now, because, you know, we talk about, and we also keep talking about as part of, uh, you know, various discussions, how the, you know, the Kirana shops or the small SMEs or the small businesses, how are they bought on board, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the linkage to that and how do you think about that when, when we talk about uh, the minis, basically? Yeah, let me take the second one first. I think minis sure. actually have nothing to do with Kirana shops, right? Uh, it is a, uh, it is a, again a, a, a business which is in PMF stage, which is where experimenting with it, looking for product market fit. Uh, essentially, there are lots of uh, new age brands in different categories, right? And this is this is to basically provide them a set of tools and also connect them to consumers in a meaningful way, right? For example, today, if you're a young brand selling, I don't know, plant the baskets, okay? Can you quickly sort of... Uh, put up a online store, right? And get going with consumers in a, uh, and, and you don't have to really build a payment gateway. You don't have to build the architecture needed. So we believe somebody, anybody who wants to can pretty much go live on Swiggy Minis within practically few, uh, few minutes, few hours, right? So that's the whole spirit where uh, we feel there's a, there's a interesting play with, with SM, this segment, which is many, many, many new small businesses being created in India. On ESG, I think the uh, the biggest impact in my mind will happen on the EV side, where um, slowly we'll see EV two-wheelers being getting adopted, right? And we are already working with a bunch of companies who are in that space in EV to, to do the early pilots with them. The scale-up will be a function of uh, both uh, capital and economic feasibility because ultimately it has to make sense for the delivery partner to be able to take that EV. Uh, even though there, and there's a bit of a capex and to, to opex play there because uh, even if the opex is low, sometimes the capex is a deterrent so far, right? So as the cap, as the values come down, as it becomes more affordable, you'll see acceleration happening. And in some cases, I think even even uh, states and governments will mandate a certain level of uh, EV penetration up to by X date or X year. So, and, and that's the biggest, uh, in my mind, journey on ESG that uh, we'll be undertaking. Got it. And something on packaging also, Rohit, specifically? Uh, packaging. When it is, when yeah. it is delivered? Uh, I'm, I, I, I meant think, in terms of you know the orders delivered because there are always. Yeah, look, I think that of... is, in my mind that is a tougher one because uh, frankly, the the cost of packaging in in uh, see the food has to travel. Okay, so the first thing the consumer and I'm taking a consumer lens to it. Like first thing the consumer looks for is the food came in the in the right condition for you to be able to consume it, right? Nobody will be happy in a sustainable packaging if the food is spoiled, right? Sure. And that evolution is still happening, I'll say, where uh, the, the reliability during travel, the type of packaging and the cost, that equation is still, I think, in the favor of some of the uh, uh, traditional methods of pack- packaging food. But again, you know, my belief is these are all problems at point in time. Companies will ecosystem. We won't do it directly because we don't do packaging material ourselves. But companies will. Uh, these are large markets where young entrepreneurs, companies will come and uh, solve this problem of saying right cost, right quality, 
and sustainable material, what's the best model? Sure, sure. So, <clears throat> no, so you know, first of all, thank you, Rohit, for such you know wonderful insights and putting them together in a very you know simple and <clears throat> you know transparent manner. I think extremely useful. Uh, what I would encourage, there are you know more questions, but I think. Uh, you know, they cover the length and breadth of the business, which shows how closely people are, you know, following uh, Swiggy as a business. So some really good insights. Thank you so much, Rohit, uh, for the session. It was very, very informative. Uh, I think any closing thoughts, Rohit, from your side, and then we can move on to the second section. No, oh, absolutely. I think the only closing thought I have is that uh, uh, in the we are a world in which there is so much information. Um, I think as, as people on this call, I don't know, uh, many of them are there. Um, uh, I think the ability to think first principle is a very precious ability. Um, because there's so much being fed every day into our minds and screens. It is, it is very tempting to fall, fall for the last tweet or fall for the last post. And see, yeah, such a. So there, I I think uh, I am st I still, at least the way I do it, I I'm on social media very often, so it's not like I'm a social media recluse. Uh, I'm present there, but I still read a lot of books, right? and I talk to a lot of people who are experts in their areas, um, to just keep my own mind fresh and not colored. Uh, in what really matters. So that's something I'll, I'll genuinely encourage um, people to do. We, we have just too much information so that we can be lulled into believing he is such. Sure, sure. Makes a lot of sense. I'll cap the discussion, Rohit, with one last question, if you can answer that for me, because that is something which I, you know, see as part of a lot of companies and, you know, the business. I think when we deal with a lot of people, right, like uh, with the entire startup, ecosystem which has developed over the last you know five or six years we see that uh, you know in terms of progressions in terms of if i compare it say 10 years before uh, you know when we started our careers or 15 years you know if we rewind uh, simply from a you know growth and the, the the entire trajectory which which is expected from a lot of people is that of course the business is also developing at pace right and scale is important, moving at speed is important, but there's a constant struggle in terms of, you know, managing those expectations where, you know, one would believe that replacing experience vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, what you're achieving, say, on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, the balance, how do you, you know, manage those expectations? Because those, those are some of the things which, you know, keep coming up, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So your question is, how do you balance medium-term objectives and the short-term pressures of... In terms of the business and in terms of employees. So, you know, if I rewind 10 years back or 15 years back, you know, experiencing, say, two or three years at a particular role and, you know, then making a natural progression was the norm. However, you know, with a lot of startups coming in place, you know, big packages, while it is getting rationalized over a period of time, but in terms of expectation of your team, of your employees, yeah. that is something, you know, how do you coach them? How do you, you know, manage those expectations? That is something which, you know, I've experienced also. And I, when I talk to a lot of people, it is something which runs as a common thread. Got it, got it. No, you, also, so. you also relate with that, it seems. Yeah, I know I, I get get your question. I think it's a, a very uh, uh, deep question in some sense. Uh, my, my own uh, reflection is that as a company, and, and this is one of my personal philosophy, is uh, trends come and trends go. Right? The culture and doing the right thing by somebody else, whoever it is, it could be a customer, could be an employee, could be a partner, are that that old fashion tradition thing still works very well. And there are two or three simple principles that I follow. I treat even an, everyone as an adult. 
if you are 18 plus you are technically an adult you are supposed to behave like an adult and you should be treated like an adult right so there is no um, uh, uh, i think the patronizing culture is not a good culture right where uh, a culture where anybody takes anybody else is hostage for a situation is not a good culture either ways whether it is the employee or the employer right a culture where progression is based on um insecurity or fear either ways is not a good culture right so we we are i'm very clear on what is not a good culture and hence even if there are short term pressures i don't for, i don't go for it hmm. because hota kya hai mai hamesha kehta hu ki uh agar short term thodi takleef leni hai mai le lunga long term rishte acche rahenge right saaf saaf baat karna like for example people say oh i've spent 12 months in the role or 18 months in the role hmm so that's a very relevant statistic i am x x years old do you care like kina dharti pe itne saal se hu aapko koi farak padta hai us cheez se hmm you should care because i told you my age you don't care right similarly time in role has no meaning impact in role is what i care about hmm have you have you become better in that role from point a to point b are you read are you prepared for the next role or are you are you prepared to fail in the next next role of course i've seen many many superstars flame in the next role why they were not prepared right so uh, th- there is never in so look x number of people high quality people we need right to run the company that x is a large number but is not an impossible number whatever happens in the external environment if we are diligent if we are passionate like we still do for senior levels we do still do six rounds of interviews of one hour each right we still will run like 20 ref checks if required till we are convinced that values wise principles wise and if that we are bringing in somebody who will succeed in the organization that they're joining it's very important तो हाँ सब सारे बिहेवियर देखने को मिलते हैं पर अब वो बिहेवियर चेंज भी हो जाता है ना मार्केट अच्छा रहता है तो बिहेवियर थोड़ा एग्रेसिव हो जाते हैं मार्केट जैसे ही ठंडा होता है बिहेवियर बट इट्स नॉट लाइक कि इट्स नॉट शुड बी अदर वे एंड ऑल्सो कि मार्केट अभी बहुत खराब है तो लेट स्टार्ट बुलडोजिंग आर एम्प्लॉइज ऑफकोर्स अभी कहाँ जाएंगे राइट आई थिंक दैट्स दैट्स अगेन अ मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ पोअर कल्चर आई थिंक द लेवल ऑफ रेस्पेक्ट फॉर इंडिविजुअल एज एन अडल्ट should remain irrespective of the macro environment because we are too small as an employer right um, we can employ a few thousand people with diligence and effort we'll always find them thodi mehnat jyada lagegi aur kya hoga yeah kuch ke lane mein us ke practices kharab kare wo to next wo wo theek nahi hai so why what i what i hear from you rohit is that you know if i just put it correctly that <clears throat> you know in one of my previous organizations you know it was a belief that when you are actually operating at a role where you needed to be promoted it is just a fitment what you do because otherwise you know you are setting up somebody for failure if that is you know done forward looking or you know looking in advance is that correct that's correct yeah hmm. got it got it so rohit on that note i think thank you so much it was a great interaction really you know you know great to have have you here we had a great attendance and i'm sure people will take away a lot from this session once again thank you and uh, for our audience we'll move on to you know the next section where what okay. we want to Thank, Thank you, Rohit. Thanks Thank a lot. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Really appreciate. Rohit. Thank you, Rohit. <clears throat> so, for our audience, what we will do is that you know we will now uh, go over the SMB program, uh, which is in collaboration with INSEAD. So, there are two parts to it. One is the program itself, where we are running our fourth batch. It's a highly successful uh, program. It's in collaboration with INSEAD, which has been rated as number two college, you know, globally, very recently. And we are also running an immersion. where we you know take our learners uh, where we are planning to take our learners to paris 
stay on the campus, have very, uh, you know, uh, a very thoughtful agenda for a week where they get to network, uh, very diverse background people, right from founders to, you know, two to 15 to 25 years experienced people, uh, you know, innovation lab visits, something like a Carrefour, uh, you know, experiencing life case studies, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll just let, you know, Ronak spend 15, 20 minutes to spend before on that. The, right, before that, Varun, I can quickly just run a poll for the people who would want to know more about the program. And sure, the, that would uh, be very helpful, my mom. Sure. Thank you. So over to you, Ronak. After that, you know, let's spend 20 minutes and over to you. Thank you so much. Thank Rana, you. can you see the poll on the screen? Yeah. yeah. See them. Thank you. So everyone, you could see the poll on your screen. You can quickly go and uh, take the poll and we could just get the clear idea how many of you are, you know, wishing to know about the program that we're offering. So while the responses come in, Ronak, over to you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Varun. Thanks so much, Varun. All right. Good evening, everybody. So I believe that after a wonderful one-hour session with Rohit Kapoor, uh, you know, we are filled in with a lot of thoughts in our mind. So while I talk about the program, which is Strategic Management and Business Essentials, as the name indicates, which comes in collaboration with NCR, I'll, you know, like to pick up a few phrases which Rohit used during his conversation last one hour. While we understood about the importance of the growing, you know, importance of technology in today's world, as well as how the customer base is evolving day on day, and how the mindset of, you know, the entrepreneurs or the employees are changing on that rapid pace, that is where it is also important to have strategic key initiatives while we are at any project or while we are at any skill set or any designation in today's world. So to talk, start with, what I'll talk about is, <clears throat> as we know that in today's world, a lot of, you know, gone are the days when we used to say that, okay, doing an MBA is necessary for one to start ahead with. It is not mandatory for you to go ahead with an MBA. What is mandatory for us to go ahead with is the right skill sets, which is required. We have seen cases where we have engineers who are turning up into the job where they are into fields of marketing. We have also seen areas where people who are, you know, into the fields of commerce are now into <laughs> product development. <laughs> so the whole transition phase, when we speak about, I'm going to talk about something which comes in from the university, which is one of the top three universities across the globe. And in terms of B schools, they have the highest diversity. It is none other than NCR, which has its first campus located in Fontainebleau, which is near to Paris in the France, right? And when I talk about the present state scenario, they have their campus, which is also in San Francisco, Abu Dhabi and Singapore. Now, when we talk about why NCR is a great university, you know, to learn and to upskill yourself, the reason being that NCR has produced the second most CEO of the Fortune 500 companies in the world, right? And when we talk about that, the diversity is so high, the diversity is so great that when you compare it to a Harvard Business School, when in a Harvard Business School, you would find in a you know classroom setup that 60% of people in the classroom are coming in from an American background. However, when you want to learn in from a geographical perspective, I talk about purely based on nationality, based on languages, you would find that NCR is having the most diverse culture. Well, the program, if I would want to speak about, I'll start with sharing my screen. And uh, I believe that uh, once I share my screen and you you can please confirm on the same. Yes, Ronak, I can see your screen. Sure, thank you very much for confirming. Now, when what we know about NCR, so I think that as I have mentioned right now, and as you can see on the screen itself that you know, NCR is having a great pool of faculty members where we talk about, you know, terms like a blue ocean strategy or terms like a design thinking. And when I go a further deep, this is about where you want to learn into the present state areas. What are those? These are into the areas of leadership, into the areas of understanding the basic nitty of a business. So for example, let's say it doesn't matter if you are coming in from a background of sales or marketing, or if you're coming in from a background of HR, or if you're coming in from a background, which is like say a product development or a supply chain, whatever could be the background. Today, if you are into team handling level, 
irrespective of the designation which you are serving at. It is highly important for you to have a cross collaborative functionals and understanding that approach right at the deepest level so that you can perform at the best of your capabilities. And to do that, there are two ways to look at it. What we see in this program is that we have bifurcated the program in such a manner that's a six months program delivered in a complete life setup. Now, when we say that it's a life setup program, it means that there will be inclusions from the faculties and the industry experts from the hero wide's end. And also there will be complete pool of faculties who will be delivering live lectures from NCR's end, right? Now, when I go towards the part of that, you would see that over here, these are certain faculties who have been delivering lecture for this program in the previous batches as well, and also in the subsequent batches too. Now, I just name a few over here, like say, for example, if I talk about Andrew Shapilov. Now, he is one of the very renowned faculty, not just with restriction into the NCR campus, but let's say, for example, if you just go on Google and type his name, and if you just go on YouTube or type his name, you would find multiple search results coming in right at the suggestions. Where he talks about on the areas of a blue ocean strategy. I think there are multiple case studies, but due to the restrictions and time today, we would not have this topic today. We have had this topic also in the past. Now, for example, there are other faculties as well. If you look at the background, the background itself is so diverse that let's say, for example, somebody is coming in from in Stanford and somebody is coming in from an MIT. But the major part is in today's world, if somebody has already, you know, had his or her graduation or a post-graduation, let's say a decade back, or let's say more than, you know, uh, one and a half decade back, it is really quite difficult to manage it with present day scenario, right? Because you are indulged into a day-to-day -day work, you have your office job, you have your personal responsibilities as well. And how would you do that? So the classes which happen for this program happen over the weekends, over the Saturdays and over the Sunday. And on those Saturdays and Sundays, there is other live classes which one needs to attend. The program is delivered in such a setup that you just don't have to, you know, imbibe into the lessons and do some assignments and you are done with the certificate. No, it's not easy as it seems to be. Because, for example, <clears throat> the program includes the lectures, it involves group, it involves group discussion, it involves assignments, at, and it also involves business simulations. Business simulations are highly important because into the present day setup, if you talk about any business, and if you would want to understand the business at depth, you cannot just do that from a theoretical angle because it's an outside perspective. Now, when we talk about the industry experts over here, there are great personalities who would be, you know, taking the expert sessions time to time during this program. Well, if you can look at over here, we have ISBs and IM Ahmedabad alumni also over here. And when it comes from an industry experience perspective, uh, perspective, we have, let's say, for example, Shiva, who has worked with Barclays in the past. We have Shesh, who has worked with Walmart and Amazon in the past, right? We have Satya Marora, who is right now, you know, working with Philips in Netherlands and Amsterdam, right? Giving such examples, it's not just sufficient. What I want to talk about a bit in more detail is about how's the batch profile actually. When we talk about this program, we know that, you know, one should understand whether this program is right for me or not. So when we talk about the batch diversity, the median comes at 11.8, 11, 11 which has been rounded off to 12 years, which means that when you look at the diversity of the batch, the beauty is the batch itself is not high in number. It ranges between 40 to 50 people in each batch. Now, 40 to 50 people, why is that a restricted number? The reason being that from since I have mentioned that this is a live delivery where it is also important for you to engage and interact. And for that matter, it is also important that once we have a large group session, it is really not possible to have that same kind of a support and attention throughout the sessions. And that is where if you would see, there comes the difference. Mm -hmm. And the diversity is so that there are people coming in from backgrounds like an FMCG, from an IT sector, from an automobile sector, from a BFSI sector, and from multiple startup fraternities to a core industry group also at a level of a VP, AVP, directors, CEOs, CFOs, CBOs, founders, entrepreneurs, AGM, senior managers, all of them are in a part of this profile. The reason being that while you know a part of your job, you would also seek to know what's happening in the business outside. You would also seek to know how the global market is evolving. You would also seek to know and understand. Let's say, for example, <coughs> excuse me. Let's say, for example, you would be, you know, hands-on with let's say marketing and sales. But what about understanding finance? How would you read the balance sheet? And when you talk about leading teams, 
whether you have that sort of capabilities to understand how do you lead teams in today's world that is a so from that perspective i talk about what one thing which uh, was rightly mentioned by rohit also in the session that today in swiggy itself if i talk about there have been lot of referral hiring and that's not the case just with swiggy with a lot of good companies as well it is because you know it is also said that your network defines your net worth and when we talk about the network this program which is coming in such a fashion where you would be meeting and encountering with people into your batch who are working at great profiles leading large teams and being a part of great organizations it will definitely enhance network because it has done that for people who have enrolled for the program in the past now this about when you learn the industry modules as the nomenclature indicates it's not just about learning the modules but also learning it from the industry experts which means that people who have done that hands on and are still doing it at their present roles at the respective organizations for which they are associated with or maybe the entrepreneurs would be the one who would talk about these important modules and this is just a basic overview which i am putting right in front of you when it comes to ncr right and as i am repeating it again you know which is one of the top e schools in the world and when it comes to learning from them you learn into areas which are highly important into the ever changing setup of today's business which is about how do you establish your brand which is about how do you think into a new age initiatives which is design thinking how do you influence people without authority you know we have often seen cases where people are very good at managing their own team but for example you have suppliers but for example you know you have vendors for which you have to deal with but you know you have a day to day work which you have to get done but you can't just you know authorize them into the same fashion which you can get it done from your own team members in certain cases that is where influencing without authority like an art of persuasion also comes in into the picture business simulation you know when we talk about and you know i am not here to compare it with any other program offered by other renowned universities across but business simulation is something which is a very unique and a great tool by which you can catalyze your understanding and you can really add to your skill set over here we talk about different you know simulation cases and this is mentioned in detail also in the program okay now we talk about entrepreneurial thinking being an entrepreneur is really important in today's world and when i say that being an entrepreneur some of you might be baffled to hear it from me that what does being an entrepreneur really mean but everybody should be an entrepreneur you know at his or her workplace it means that you should own the workplace you should own the part you know even with let's say for example we have our kras and the kpis which are well defined but this is not just the fact that you should go and complete the kras and the kpis on a day to day level what's more important is to understand that these kras and kpis are something which are ever changing and as rohit also mentioned in the macro environment fashion whatever happens outside it is imperative for us to understand that what are our do's and don'ts across in an organization having said that this is about the program in a crisp manner while you know there are great testimonials available across you know social media platforms of hero wide which is linkedin and which is youtube as well where you would be able to find the testimonials of learners across but what i'm going to show you right now is let's say for example the batch profile okay now when it comes to the batch profile just giving an example of one kind of a one particular small batch for the you know this program where you could see there are people working at repeated positions with great companies coming in from diverse experience and diverse industries have been a part of this program right the other batch if you just look at over here and if my screen is completely visible you would be able to see that there are people again coming in from great companies with places and with designations where they are already into leading large teams right and when i say this the last part which i just want to conclude with is that there is also an add on option for people who join this program to go to the campus which is located in france right fontainebleau and there is a 5 days on campus immersion option available in this immersion option there is complete you know facility which is from the point you land at the airport to the point you again go back to the airport which means that excluding your airfare and your visa charges any if anything and everything is born into the program fees of immersion into this immersion you would create a 
you know, you would be getting a great experience of building your network, not just within the periphery of the people who are a part of your batch into this program, but also you would be able to interact with the faculties there at the INSEAD campus in France, right? Unlike, let's say, for example, if I talk about a Stanford where, you know, one can also get into the campus and can experience the campus, NCR is relatively not easy as it sounds, you know, while NCR is also a dream of a lot of people who appear for examinations and to clear that <clears throat> and, and clear and get into the one year MBA program, it's not as easy as it seems like. Now, over here, there are, you know, different sessions which are planned day on day where you would be doing industry session. You would also be going to Carrefour. You would also be understanding and de deciphering the same strategy. You would be meeting different industry experts right over there, understanding also from a European perspective, how business have changed across, right? And followed by a networking gala dinner event, which is a great, you know, example for you to understand about the networking opportunities. Having said that, the details of anything and everything with respect to this, whether it is the strategic management program or whether it's a program which is into the business analytics and data science or whether it's into a program of product management, you know, hero wide, what is the role of hero wide into all of that? Some of you might also have this question in your mind to answer that. I'll tell you that hero wide as the name indicates, it's a, you know, it's a part of the hero group company and why it stands for virtual education where the motto is simply to upskill people who are, you know, not able to get into the right path of what they are looking forward in their career. And to do that, what's important in today's world is that, you know, degrees are now being replaced by skills and that's well said by a lot of, you know, great, uh, you know, influencers as well as, you know, st startup founders too. So to do that, it's very important whether what is the kind of tool sets you would need to learn, what are the kind of skill sets you would need to add to your profile. It's highly important that you are staying up to date. One has to understand his or her Ikigai. And then from there, you would be able to pick it up. So from there now, I think that uh, I'll be picking up the questions if one has any. For the detailed understanding about the programs, you know, our team members would, you know, it would be really helpful to you if you would want to have any question. You can go to the Hero Wyatt's website and they would be able to give you the clarity. So if there are any questions, please post it. Hi, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the program that Ronak has just talked about, you have a QA and a section and a chat box open for you. Uh, you can just put down your questions and Ronak will be helping you out with your queries. Would you like, uh, Rona, would you like to just tell the duration of the program once again? Sure. So the duration of the program is six months. And the duration, when I talk about, it is delivered in a live concept on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, if I talk about immersion specifically, immersion is going to be held in the first week of October. But obviously, there are visa, there are approval coming in from the university for a mandatory factor. So for the immersion part, the last date for admissions, which we would be counting is by the end of this month, right? And uh, if there are any other questions, uh, when is the actual program is going to start? Obviously, again, as I told you, we have the batch coming right now. And the 18th of June is the application deadline for the program, right? And 18th of June can, could be also be seen on the website because as I have mentioned already in the past, we have, you know, small batches for a matter of fact that there should be great attention to anybody and everybody who is joining the program. But the first part is that not anybody and everybody can join the program. As I've also made you understand from the batch profile itself that there are people who are into leading teams, especially large teams, or there are people coming in from consulting background with a, you know, a relevant experience of somewhere close to 8 to 15 years are the people who are mostly joining this program. Okay. I believe that, uh, Mahima, there are no other questions which are open. I think we yes. have asked them all. So I maybe, hope that we've answered most of the questions. Uh, we've got question, one question. Uh, there's one question. Immersion will be at the end of the program. Okay. I'll just clear it. So immersion happens once in a year. Okay. So for example, let's say we run three batches in a year, which is the complete six months program. Irrespective of whether you enroll for this batch or whether you were a part of the last two batches or whatever batch it could be, you can opt for an immersion 
but it is mandatory that you should be a part of one of the batches, either a running or an old batch, right? So immersion happens every year and the timeline is usually between September, October. So this time it is in the first week of October. And as per our calendar, I, I think everybody is aware that 2nd of October, it's a national holiday. So it similarly fits on a line whether it's club with weekends also. So for people to take, you know, leave, etc., it also becomes very easy, right? Any other question? So I believe Mahima, we have, uh, so we have, okay, thank you very much. So I believe uh, work experience content writer, is she qualifying? Okay, all right. So what you can do, uh, so you can reach out to our team or maybe our team members would rather reach out yeah. to you, uh, with, get that probation done. And they will be speaking to you with respect to understanding that which program would really fit for your daughter. Because it is not like that, any, you know, as I told you that, you know, everybody will get the right benefit out of the program. But yes, Hero Wired is an upscaling platform where people have right choices of program. So mm -hmm. for your daughter, I, I guess there is another program which is for us in terms of financial analysis, valuation and risk management, which would really fit as per her requirements and the details of which could be shared by our team members one on one when they would be connecting. All right, Mahima, I think that's all from my end. Uh, right, we do not have any more questions, but if in case we have missed out on anybody's questions, you don't have to worry. We are going to uh, help you with a team who will be reaching out to you post this session. They will be reaching out to you personally where they'll be helping you out with the more of the program details. And if you would like to know more about what we have shared in the today's webinar, so everyone, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ronak, for helping us with the program details. Thanks everyone for being a lovely audience today. We will be coming right back with another exciting webinar for you all. And I hope this webinar was useful to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. A very good evening all of you.